I love soft pretzels, and I know all of my kids do too. Well, Marie has perfected this recipe, and we want to share it with all of you. So let's get started. So today I'm going to show you how to make my favorite soft pretzel recipe. It's a really easy recipe and only has a very few ingredients. So the first thing you're going to need is two and a half cups of flour, a cup of lukewarm water, two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast, and three tablespoons of syrup, maple syrup. And the first thing we're going to do is put our yeast and our syrup in our mixing bowl. And then we're going to add our hot water. And this is just going to activate the yeast so that it can get that nice fluffy rise that you're going to want with your pretzels. So we're going to add our water. And then just give this a little stir so it um, all the yeast comes off of the bottom. And then you're just going to let this sit for about 10 minutes or so till the yeast is like nice and fluffy on top. And it'll activate and that'll give us the beautiful rise that you're going to want with your pretzels. So we'll come back in 10 minutes and we'll finish the rest of the dough. All right, so I put my water, my yeast, and the syrup in the bowl and it has been sitting for about 10 minutes now and you can see it's nice and frothy and activated. And we are going to now add the flour. And this is, it's such an easy recipe. It's literally these three ingredients in flour. So this is two and a half cups of flour. We're just gonna put this in our bowl. And then with our bread hook, we're gonna turn it on low so the flour doesn't shoot everywhere. start to like pull away from the sides and it's not it's not a very sticky dough at all it's going to be a pretty stiff dough so just keep mixing it till it gets all 100% incorporated and then we're going to knead all right so our dough is done mixing and we are just going to knead the dough and you just want to put a little bit of flour down just enough so it won't stick And then you're just gonna knead this for about three to five minutes and it'll start to get, you'll, the texture will change a little bit, it'll get to a nice smooth ball. All right, I have been kneading for about five minutes now, and you can see that it is definitely more of a elastic -y dough. It's less shaggy and stiff. It's more of like a soft, elastic -y dough. So, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna spray a large bowl because it is gonna at least double in size. I'm gonna spray this a little bit so it won't stick, and then put my dough in and cover it with plastic wrap. And then we are gonna let this rise for one hour in a warm spot I just like I just put it in my oven with the, with the light on, so it gets so there's no drafts in there. It's still a little bit warm with the light, and we're just gonna let it sit for one hour, and then we'll come back and we'll finish the pretzel process. All right, our dough has been rising for one hour, and it has doubled in size. Yeah, it's huge now. It looks good. And then we're just gonna kind of like punch it down a little bit to get all the air bubbles out. Oh, it was so fluffy. I know. Now it's sad to punch it out. <laughs> And then I'm gonna put it on our pan here. And I just um, the line, I land, lined a pan with parchment. And then we are just gonna cut this into eight even pieces. So this is a single recipe, and it consistently makes eight pretzels. Yes. So I'm just gonna cut these in quarters, and then cut the quarters in half again, kind of like a pizza. Ok, 
All right, and then we are going to roll these out to about like 12 to 15 inches long, and then we will make them into our pretzel shapes. And I'm here to help. Though I hate to, I've never made these before. I'm just gonna say it out loud. Um, Marie's the professional, so I'm just doing what she's doing. So if I can learn to do this, you guys can do this. So you said between 12 and 15 inches. Yeah. Can I just do it down here? Sure. It seems more controlled this way. That's true, yours is going faster than mine is. That seems about good to me. So that's a, you can kind of see the length there. And then I'm just gonna definitely more like 15 yeah, inches. 15. If that's the one sure. you're doing. Yeah. Because these aren't these aren't huge pretzels. They're more of like a medium, like that big. You'll see. It. But yeah. Go back to your method. All right. All right. Is this good for this one? Yep. All right. It's definitely elastic dough. All right, and then let me show you how to do it. Yeah. So you're gonna start like this, and then you're gonna bring it and twist it twice, so it'll look like that. And then bring these two sides down and push them in pretty well. And that's, and then it's a very stretchy it's, dough, it's, so you can stretch it out. That's the pretzel shape. Looks good. And these will like at least double in size in the oven too, so they're nice and fluffy. And you don't have to do a second rise on these, right? You're gonna show no, us next what we do. In the oven. Not straight yeah. in the oven. First, yeah. there's an, another step that's very important, which we will talk about when we're done doing this. See, I have seen you make them, so I know how to make them. I just haven't had to do it. I don't know what I'm going to do someday when all my girls, all you ladies who have gone through this where your kids get older and they move out or they get married or whatever, that makes me sad already. Who's going to make me pretzels? I can still bring them. <laughs> I'll have to bake again. So twist twice. Twice. Ooh, that's too much. Okay, twist and twice. Just bring them down and pinch them. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you're right. That looks funny. Because you said. Oh, of course. I knew that. Okay, and then stretch. Yes. Just Is that pinch pinched it, enough? Yeah. Look at. I actually have made these. Do you remember Park Street? Julianne's behind the camera. I made them at Park Street, and I. You what did I do? Wax paper. I used instead of the parchment paper. The first time paper. I made them. Yeah, this was funny. So I hate to admit it, the pretzels looked really good. I did make them and I followed the process and everything. But then, for some reason, I accidentally grabbed wax paper instead of parchment paper. No, what you did was you said, <laughs> oh, it'll work the same as parchment paper. I don't remember. Anyway. It didn't. It didn't no, work. It did not. So our pretzels totally cooked onto the wax paper. <laughs> and so we couldn't eat them. They still taste, we, well, I mean, we, we ate the top, the top half. Them. Yeah, so I just let Marie do it. You guys don't remember, but back in the day when it was, when you guys, when I, specifically when I had only four little kids and you were all little at the same time, you would want to be up there on the stool, making banana bread with me, making cookies with me, all the things. You would want to be right there. Specifically, um, you more than Julianne, surprisingly, because now Julianne really does like to... Julian was too busy climbing things to stop to bake anything. Not anymore. All right, almost done? Yep. It's really very quick. Even I know you usually do this by yourself. Usually I'm not here helping. So. <laughs> usually I make a double batch. Yeah, and usually because eight does not cut it. One per person. These are so good that, and you, uh, the nice thing about this recipe is you can double it and it doesn't mess up. The recipe it still behaves the same way but make sure you have a giant bowl yes. to let the dough rest in because first time I did it it like overflowed the bowl because I, I didn't have that bowl it was a smaller bowl um, because it really absolutely doubles even sometimes more than doubles while you're waiting okay I don't even need to stretch this one really no, okay all right okay next we're moving into the kitchen to the stove top, so we'll meet you in there. All right, this next step is very important because it gives the pretzels that beautiful golden crust that we all love. What I have here is four cups of water and we're just gonna bring that to a boil. The water is boiling and I have set my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Now that the water is boiling, you can see it's very, it's a very high boil. I'm going to add a quarter cup of baking soda, and it's going to bubble. And then just stir it in so it does, no clumps are anywhere. And then you're going to need a slotted spatula of some kind to get them out, to get all the liquid off when you take the pretzels out. So what I'm going to do is take our first pretzel and set it in, and it's going to go 15 seconds on this side and 15 seconds on the other side. So I'm just going to kind of fold on top around and we'll about 15 seconds and then flip it over and do the same thing. And they'll get almost kind of puffy in there while they're in the soda bath. It's called a soda bath, by the way. They get almost puffy looking. Right. And then just get all the liquid off your drain a little bit there. And then back onto the pan. You can see how it, it got a little bigger than what it was. It was about this size before it went in, and it puffs up because it's nice and hot in the pan. All right, so our second one will go in. Same thing for everyone. We're just going to do 15 seconds on one side, 15 seconds on the other, and then we will go to baking. Marie, I can't help but notice that you're making a mess on my stove top. Yeah, the baking soda likes to shoot and make everything white. Yeah. So just expect that to happen. That, that is normal. That is normal. normal. It bubbles, and but it comes off really easy. It's just a warm yeah. washcloth. But yes, you are going to make a little bit of a mess in your kitchen. And that's all baking soda bubbles there. All right, all of our pretzels have had their soda bath. And now all we're going to do is sprinkle them with kosher salt, and then they're ready to go into the oven. Alright, these are all sprinkled with kosher salt now, and they are going to go in the oven for 15 minutes at 400 degrees. They look so good, and my house smells so good, you guys. It just smells delicious. Alright, so you kept them in for 15 minutes. Yep. They look beautiful, and you see that they're this gorgeous golden brown color because of that soda bath. So we're just gonna take these. They need to cool a little bit. When do you brush them? Uh, okay, so Marie's gonna brush all of these with melted butter and you know, we all like them different ways. So not one way is not better than the other. We like them all. So the four different ways we like to eat them are simply with the salt that is on them. This kosher salt gives it a great, salty, crunchy, delicious flavor. So just salt. We love, love, love the everything bagel seasoning. It's so good, and you just, when it's got butter on it like this, that's when you sprinkle this on. This makes it, makes it taste like an everything bagel. We also love it, and this is me. Not, I don't think all my kids like it with the spicy nacho cheese. It's so good. Tabitha likes that. Um, then last but not least, if you want a sweet pretzel, tell what do we do for the sweet pretzels? Uh, I think Julianne's done it previously, but she does like coconut sugar and butter. Well, melted butter, yeah. coconut sugar, cinnamon, Vanilla, vanilla. vanilla. Julianne's behind yeah. the camera. And she mixes it into a paste and you can either drizzle it on or just dip it. I like it dipped. And you know what, a fifth way I just thought of, which we haven't done, is a glaze, glaze. which I, we used to do. But anyway, we haven't done that in a while. So that's five different ways that you can enjoy these pretzels and they are so delicious. They will be a hit in your house, I promise. They will not disappoint. And the best thing about making them at home is first, they're easy. Second, it's like you get that hot, fresh pretzel right out of the oven. These don't last more than a day. Even if she makes a double batch, they're gone. 
like we just turned this into a meal. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you, Marie, for making these for us so we can all enjoy them. And you guys have to try this at home and let me know how your family likes it. Tag us on Instagram or Facebook or whatever and let us know. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to see more recipes, definitely leave it below in the comments and let us know. And we will talk to you guys soon and see you in the next video. You couldn't wait like two seconds? <laughs> It's steaming. I can see the steam. See, this is how long they last in our mm -hmm. house.